Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Medal of Honor recipient Staff Sergeant Ronald J. Schur II, United States Army. Let us pray. God of all mercy, we ask for both your presence and your peace for all those gathered here this day. We give you thanks for this celebration, for this redemption, for this day to reflect on what you provide and what we need, for, our remind, for reminding us of the dignity of life, of service, of sacrifice, and of true heroism. Inspire us, Lord, to hold fiercely to your gifts of hope and grace and passion. May the acts, the heroic acts of Staff Sergeant Ronald Schur, move us all to greater acts of goodness, of love, to serve our soldiers, our families, our nation, and our world. For it is before you that we humbly ask these things and greatly, gratefully say, amen. amen. Thank you very much, please. And thank you, Chaplain Hurley. Thank you to Vice President Mike Pence for joining us for today's ceremony. Today, it's my privilege to award the Congressional Medal of Honor to an Army Special Forces medic who now serves in the United States Secret Service. Please join me in welcoming Staff Sergeant Ronald Schur. Ronald, thank you. I wish I was that popular, I'll tell you. <laughs> Today is a truly proud and special day for those of us here in the White House because Ron works right here alongside of us on the Secret Service Counter Assault Team. These are incredible people. Several weeks ago, my staff asked Ron and his wife, Miranda — thank you, Miranda — to a meeting in the West Wing. They didn't know what it was about. They walked into the Oval Office, and I told Ron that he was going to receive our nation's highest military honor. It was a moment I will never forget. Ron and Miranda joined today by their two beautiful sons, Cameron, who was 10, and Tyler, who was 7. Stand up. Look at these guys. Cameron, Tyler, we stand in awe of your father's courage. We really do. Today, he joins the world's most elite gathering of heroes. Also with us are his parents, Ronald Sr. and his mom, Fabiola, both Air Force veterans. America is grateful for your service. Thank you very much. Please stand. Thank you. I want to thank also 
Secretary Nielsen for joining us. Secretary, thank you very much. Along with Secretary of the Army, Mark Esper. Mark, thank you very much. Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Paul Selva. Thank you, Paul. Army Chief of Staff, General Mark Milley. Mark, thank you. Commander of Special Operations, Command General Raymond Thomas. Thank you, Raymond. And Sergeant Major of the Army, Daniel Daly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel. I also want to recognize Representative Gerald Connolly and Representative Dan Newhouse. Thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. We are privileged to have among us five former recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Benny Atkins, Harvey Barnum, Gary Bykirk, Florent Groberg, and Brian Thacker. And thank you all for being here. Thank you. Please stand up. Thank you very much for being with us. These are very brave, great people. Staff Sergeant Ron Scher was born in Fairbanks, Alaska. He grew up in a military family, moving to four states before middle school. He graduated from Washington State University and applied to join the military, but was rejected due to a medical condition. I can't believe they rejected him. <laughs> Well, that was a bad mistake, but they made up for it, right? They made up for it. Soon after, America was attacked on September 11th, 2001. Determined to serve, Ron reapplied to the military and was accepted into the United States Army. He became a medic, and then he completed the grueling training to join the legendary ranks of the Green Berets. That's a long way from not getting accepted the first time, right? That's fantastic. That's a great story. It was during his Special Forces training that Ron met Miranda. Just before Ron's first deployment, they were married. Miranda was six months pregnant with their first son, Cameron, when Ron deployed to Afghanistan for the second time. Just a month before he returned home, Ron was called on a special operations mission. The aim was to hunt down a deadly terrorist, a leader in that world. He was in a remote mountain village, very dangerous territory. On April 6, 2008, Ron was among the few dozen Special Forces soldiers and 100 Afghan commandos who dropped off by helicopter into Shock Valley, a rocky, barren valley far away from reinforcements. There was nobody close. Ron was the only medic for the team. While he was still near the base of the mountain, the first team began to scale the cliff toward the village. As they approached the top, roughly 200 well-trained and well-armed terrorists ambushed the American and Afghan forces. Soon, Ron heard his comrade call his name. Ryan Wellen had been struck by shrapnel at the base of the mountain. He was very, very seriously hurt. But Ron braved enemy fire to rush to his friend and to treat his wounds. Then he heard over the radio that American fighters near the top of the cliff were pinned down, and some were critically injured. It was blood all over the place. It was a tough, tough situation to be in. Immediately, Ron climbed the Rocky Mountain, all the while fighting back against the enemy and dodging gunfire left and right. Rockets were shot at him. Everything was shot at him. When he reached the top, one of his close friends, an Afghan interpreter, was already dead. Two Americans had been shot, Dylan Baer and Luis Morales. He treated them both to stabilize them and their condition. Ron threw his body on top of Dylan to protect him from shrapnel. 
It was there on that cliff that Ron realized, and I guess he felt pretty much like that was it. Right, Ron? But Ron realized that this was probably the end. Might be all over. And as he recounts, I just said a prayer and asked that my wife and son would be okay with what was going to happen. Then I just went back to work. One of his teammates, John Walding, was trying to protect the injured when he was shot, almost severing his leg entirely. As Ron was still rendering life-saving aid to Dylan, he directed another soldier to help stem the bleeding. Then a bullet cut through Master Sergeant Scott Ford's arm and struck Ron's helmet. Ron said it felt like he had been hit on the head with a baseball bat. But he got up and, in pretty bad shape, bandaged Scott's arm. Soon, Ron and his comrades used nylon webbing to lower the most critically injured down the sides of this really dangerous and very steep cliff. When he reached the base of the mountain, Ron raced to each patient, giving them life-saving care. They were bleeding profusely and preparing them to be evacuated by helicopter. But Ron was not done yet. He charged back to the mountain, all the way up, and then rejoined the fight. For more than six hours, Ron bravely faced down the enemy. Not a single American died in that brutal battle, thanks in great measure to Ron's heroic actions. Many of the warriors who fought in Shock Valley are here today. When I read your name, will you please stand? Staff Sergeant Dylan Bear. Stand up. Stay up, please. Specialist Mike Carter. Thank you, Staff. Thank you. Master Sergeant Scott Ford. Sergeant First Class Seth Howard. Staff Sergeant Luis Morales. Sergeant Major Dan Plants. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Kyle Walton. <laughs> Sergeant First Class Matt Williams. <laughs> Sergeant First Class Carl Wurzbach. And two wonderful Afghan translators, Baruz Mohammed and Zia Gafori. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. He did a good job. Did he do a good job? Better say yes now, otherwise it's too late. <laughs> we can always change our mind. He did a good job. Thank you all for your noble service and for being here to celebrate Ron's historic achievement. It truly is that. As many of you know, a year and a half ago, Ron was diagnosed with cancer. Tough cancer. Rough cancer. But he's braved, battled, worked. He's done everything he can. That cancer, he's been fighting it every single day with courage and with strength. And he's a warrior. He's a warrior. And just like he faced every single battle of his entire life, he's facing a very tough battle right now with cancer. But I will tell you, he's the best dad and role model two boys could ever ask for. 
Right? Do you agree with that? Yeah, you better say yes. Yeah, I already asked them that question. They needed no prodding. I said, is he a good father or a great father? They said, great father, right? That's good. The best father ever. Wow. That's great. Beautiful, beautiful boys. And Ron, I just want to say as an inspiration to everyone in this room and to every citizen all across our great land, Ron, our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy as we prepare to engrave your name alongside of America's greatest heroes. It is my honor and privilege, along with Mike and all of these incredible warriors in front of me, to present you with the Congressional Medal of Honor. I would like to ask the military aide to come forward and read the citation, please. Thank you. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Ronald J. Schur II, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Ronald J. Schur II distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty on April 6, 2008, while serving as a Senior Medical Sergeant, Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha 3336, Special Operations Task Force 33, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Staff Sergeant Schur was part of an assault element inserted by helicopter into a location in Afghanistan. As the assault element moved up a near vertical mountain toward its objective, it was engaged by fierce enemy machine gun sniper and rocket propelled grenade fire. The lead portion of the assault element, which included the ground commander, sustained several casualties and became pinned down on the mountainside. Staff Sergeant Schur and the rest of the trailing portion of the assault element were likewise engaged by enemy machine gun, sniper and rocket propelled grenade fire. As the attack intensified, he braved enemy fire to move to an injured soldier and treat his wounds. Having stabilized the soldier, he then learned of the casualties among the lead element. Staff Sergeant Schur fought his way up the mountainside under intense enemy fire to the lead element's location. Upon reaching the lead element, he treated and stabilized two more soldiers. Finishing those life-saving efforts, he noticed two additional severely wounded soldiers under intense enemy fire. The bullet that had wounded one of these soldiers had also impacted Staff Sergeant Schur's helmet. With complete disregard for his own life, Staff Sergeant Schur again moved through enemy fire to treat and stabilize one soldier's severely wounded arm. Shortly thereafter, he continued to brave withering enemy fire to get to the other soldier's location in order to treat his lower leg, which had been almost completely severed by a high caliber sniper round. After treating the soldier, Staff Sergeant Schur began to evacuate the wounded, carrying and lowering them down the sheer mountainside. While moving down the mountain, he used his own body to shield and the wounded from enemy fire and debris caused by danger close airstrikes. Reaching the base of the mountain, Staff Sergeant Schur set up a casualty collection point and continued to treat the wounded. With the arrival of the medical evacuation helicopter, Staff Sergeant Schur, again under enemy fire, helped load the wounded into the helicopter. Having ensured the safety of the wounded, he then regained control of his commando squad and rejoined the fight. He continued to lead his troops and in place security elements until it was time to remove the evacuation landing zone for the helicopter. Staff Sergeant Schur's actions are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force Afghanistan, Special Operations Command Central, and the United States Army.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats until the president has departed the East Room. Lord God, we're encouraged by this, by these selfless acts of Staff Sergeant Ronald Shooter. Send us out to work at to to the work at hand for each of us with your grace for the leadership, character, and sacrifice that will honor you and honor the needs of all those before us. Bless us, keep us, make your face shine on us, and be gracious to us. May we all find both peace and contentment in the knowledge of your love and in the promise of your presence. In your most holy name we pray, amen.